Welcome. This is the section, uh, this is 48G video 4 and this is the section on apparent weight. Um, what it says is a force gauge, that's like a newton meter, can measure the apparent weight of an accelerating block. So here we have a block and we have it attached by a piece of string to a, a gauge, one of those force gauges that's calibrated in newtons. And you can find its weight, that's typically what you do, you find the weight of it. Um, well, okay, if you're sta stationary, then what you read is the weight of the object, which is caused by, well, W equals mg, where W is the weight, and M is the mass, and G is actually the gravitational field strength measured in newtons per kilogram. You might have been told it's the acceleration due to gravity, but I'd prefer you to think about it as the gravitational field strength. Um, okay, the, how does it work? Well, the, the, the scale senses the tension in this wire. There's a spring inside, and the more the tension, the more the spring is extended. So the scale is really reading the tension. And the tension here, at the, near the scale, is equal and opposite to the tension near the mass. And so it really, this, this Newton meter really measures the tension in the string rather than the weight of the object. But because the weight of the object, when you're stood still, is equal to the tension in the string, it works just fine. We say the scale provides a tension force needed to match the weight of the mass, and so we measure the tension force. The situation is not quite the same when we're accelerating. When the whole system, let's say you get into an elevator and you press the up button, then as you go from 0 meters per second to, say, 15 meters per second, you are accelerating. And so while you're accelerating, then we have a different situation. The scale provides a tension force needed to match the weight of the mass and also to cause its acceleration. Something must be causing this mass to accelerate, otherwise it wouldn't. That is caused by a force. It happens to be a part of the tension force. So if you get an elevator and you press an up button while you're accelerating, uh, uh, going upwards, and your acceleration is upwards, you will read a heavier weight for the block. When you get near the top, when you're slowing down, so your acceleration is downwards and your velocity is upwards, then you will have a lower weight than normal for the block. And the same thing goes when you're descending. You can feel that in your knees when you actually get in an elevator. How do we do this? Well, we solve these problems by using Newton's laws. It's a Newton's laws problem, even though it might look like it's a different type of problem. So the first thing we do is we, we say there's a four kilogram block. So let's put four kilograms here. And it hangs from a force gauge. So let's put the force gauge there. And of course, there's a downwards force on the force gauge which is our tension and there's an upwards force on the on the at pulling the block up which is again tension and this is an action reaction pair so they are equal and opposite um, now it says a four kilogram mass hangs from a force gauge while traveling in an elevator that is moving upwards so our velocity is upwards and speeding up well if I'm moving upwards and speeding up my acceleration is also upwards. A little bit of conceptual insight there. And the acceleration is equal to 3 meters per second squared. It says, what is the apparent weight indicated by the scale? So the apparent weight indica indicated by the scale is this tension. It's that force there. That's my apparent weight because that's what the scale reads. And I look and say, is my diagram complete? And it's not. I have to add the gravitational uh, force on the four kilogram mass, which is 40 newtons. Now my diagram is complete. 
I say, well, the sum of the forces vertically must equal, well, this object is accelerating, so it's going to be ma. But the sum of the forces on what? It's a net external force. I've got to have something that is the subject of my equation, and it's the 4 kilogram mass. So the sum of the forces vertically on the 4 kilogram mass is the mass of the 4 kilogram mass times the acceleration of the 4 kilogram mass. So I say, okay, well, let's look at this. My external forces, I have a T, and that is pointing upwards. So let's call that positive T. And I have a, got to add, it's the sum of the forces. I have a 40, and that is pointing downwards. So that's a negative 40. And then I have a mass, and I know the mass is 4. And that's got no direction, that's a scalar. But I have this acceleration. And so this acceleration, if I look, is pointing upwards because it says it's speeding up while traveling upwards. So this is a plus 1.5. That plus is important and you get it from the diagram. So my T is equal to 4 times plus 1.5, bring your 4D across, plus 40. So that means that my T is equal to uh, 6 plus 40. T is equal to 46 Newtons. So normally, if I was just stood in a stationary elevator, or if I was stood in an elevator which was traveling at a constant speed, up or down, it doesn't matter, this four kilogram block would cause the force gauge to read 40 newtons. But while I am accelerating upwards, when I first press the button to go upwards, while I'm increasing my speed, traveling upwards, going faster and faster upwards, where my, I have a velocity which is upwards and I'm speeding up so my acceleration is also pointing upwards, I get a bigger apparent weight. So, although it's called an apparent weight problem, it's really a, a, just a Newton second law problem. Let's look at the other side of this problem. So, very similar question. I have a four kilogram block being held up. I have a tension upwards and a tension downwards and it goes to a Newton meter. And the elevator is moving upwards, but it's slowing down. So that means my acceleration is in that direction. And so its acceleration is 3 meters per second squared, but the acceleration is really minus 3 meters per second squared because the acceleration is pointing downwards. What is the apparent weight? Well, this is my apparent, uh, well, that's my apparent weight, T, which is the same as this T. And I can say, have I got all my forces? I'm lacking a 40 Newton there. I say, oh, the sum of the forces vertically is equal to MA, which is the object we're looking at. We're looking at the 4 kilogram mass. So we have 4 as my subscript. I look at my equate, I look at my diagram, I look at the object, what are the external forces? Well, I have plus t pointing upwards, and I have added to this minus 40 because it's pointing downwards. And this equals my mass, but now my acceleration is not 3. Notice in the text, I just tell you it's 3. I just say, hey, it's 3 meters per second squared. I'm just inviting you to put down 3. But in fact, in this problem, because of the direction of the acceleration, this is minus 3. I'm telling you the magnitude in the question, and I'm giving you a direction. That's fair game. So I say t is equal to, it's going to be 40 minus 12, which is going to equal 28 newtons. So my t 
is equal to 28 newtons. So, a less, uh, uh, a smaller weight in this case. So watch out for your signs and the way you solve that problem is you need to draw a diagram. No matter how good you are now, if you draw diagrams, you will perform better. So start drawing diagrams if you haven't done it. So there we have it. Thank you.